Hello everyone, we will start lecture 37, the course is corrosion failures and analysis. We have been talking on erosion corrosion, then we started talking on cavitation damage and today we will talk about uh, uh, some of the protective measures one can take to prevent materials from cavitation damage and then we will uh, start discussing on uh, start discussing uh, uh, fretting corrosion which is also falling under uh, erosion corrosion. So, the course is corrosion failures and analysis. lecture 37 topic will continue erosion corrosion with the special emphasis on cavitation and uh, uh, fretting corrosion fretting corrosion now uh, if we uh, if we have, we have seen that the cavitation damage happens when bubble collapses uh, on top of a metal surface and that leads to uh, micro jet impact on the metal surface and uh, uh, also the shock waves. So, that lead to deformation on the material and that deformation can damage the passive film before it gets repassivated or it can deform and then that deformed surface can go through little bit of extra corrosion process or corrosion damage or corrosion degradation uh, before another bubble forms. And this bubble is not air bubble, this is happening due to boiling of fluid and if we consider water system then boiling of water and that happens because the decrease in pressure and if we could recall the phase diagram uh, as well as the pressure line that is existing uh, in the suction I region as well as discharge region of an impeller, impeller uh, in, of a centrifugal pump where the impeller motion gives rise to that pressure difference at different points that means suction I as well as discharge zone and those, uh, those uh, pressure lines if it intersects the vapor pressure line uh, of that particular liquid or that particular water at that temperature of the water then definitely uh, boiling happens and uh, bubble can collapse. Now, if we recall just uh, uh, so if we could see that this is the uh, pressure this is distance and this is the suction zone this is the eye zone and this is discharge zone. So, now uh, this is suction of a pump. So, the pressure line means I am considering this and the vapor pressure line uh, which is this one which is P T and correspondingly if I draw phase diagram pressure versus temperature of water. So, this is the diagram, this is solid, this is liquid, this is vapor or steam and if we consider one atmosphere pressure, then corresponding boiling temperature is 100 degree Celsius, but it can also boil, let us say this is my temperature what I am considering here, the temperature of the fluid and that boiling temperature, uh, boiling pressure would be this. So, this is P T. Now, uh, if the uh, pressure which is uh, P T then definitely uh, and if that pressure go, goes below this. So, at this point liquid and vapor they co coexist because that is an equilibrium. Now, if the pressure goes down then steam forms goes up liquid forms. So, that means between suction I and discharge points if this line the, if the pressure drops below this particular point then definitely boiling happens and if pressure goes beyond that point this point then uh, those uh, 
bubbles that boiling happens and then bubble forms steam bubbles forms and that steam bubbles will collapse. Now, if this is the situation definitely no bubble will form because uh, it is not able to reach to that equilibrium uh, boiling pressure at that temperature of the liquid. But if it is like this, this is let us say P T prime, let us say uh, if we draw another pressure temperature diagram. So, this is the diagram. Now, if this is my T prime and this is my pressure P T prime. So, now if this is that condition pertaining to this, then definitely uh, at this point boiling happens when the pressure drops below uh, this pressure and then bubble forms and that water when it goes to the discharge zone pressure goes up and then at this point uh, those boil bu bubbles that have formed containing steam they will collapse because the pressure is going above this. Initially when suction to I, suction to I pressure drops boiling happens bubble forms and then this part is from I to discharge pressure increases bubbles collapse. So, that way at this point actually uh, the cavitation happens that impact happens and that impact happens because you have this bubble and that bubble collapses like this and then the micro jet hit the surface at this point at a very high speed and then that gives you a huge pressure close to around 500 mega Pascal that can deform the surface. And even if it is a passivating metal that can um, remove the passive layer and before the another bubble forms it can repassivate if it is a strongly passivating metal. So, the by that time uh, we have little bit of material loss. So, that is the loss of metal through cavitation. So, now if we have to find out ways to prevent it. Uh, first of all, if we try to look at some of the preventive measure, first is of course, better material, because anyhow we, we cannot stop bubble formation if we try to create a negative pressure in order in case of pumps or in case of propellers, where propellers move at a high speed. So, that as a sheep moves at a, in a forward direction. So, we have to, we, that, that bubbles will be created. So, in order to uh, avoid that uh, cavitation due to bubble collapse. So, we have to have a better material, better material in the sense that stainless steel, stainless steel has got a very good uh, uh, cavitation resistance compared to uh, carbon steel. Okay, it, it has rather a very extremely high cavitation resistance compared to carbon steel. Now, then we can use coating, let us say a stellite coating. Then, and stainless steel means uh, even we can use uh, precipitation hardened stainless steel. Uh, this is normal one even 304 or 316. So, these kind of uh, stainless steels one can use uh, then uh, precipitation hardening nickel chromium alloy uh, like in Cornell. 625 or 718. People can use uh, uh, Hastelloy, which is nickel, molybdenum, chromium alloy. Hastelloy, it is in uh, Hastelloy C. Uh, people can use Monel, nickel, copper, aluminum. Even uh, one can use uh, manganese bronze, uh, 
and where cavitation is not that severe, okay, so then in that case and in the mild cases people can also use carbon steel. So, these are the kind of better materials one can think of. Uh, uh, second is uh, uh, operating pump beyond uh, uh, boiling pressure. at that liquid temperature uh, if we try to understand this statement so for example in this case in this case uh, i have the boiling pressure uh, which is cutting uh, this suction i and discharge lines uh, in such a way that boiling and uh, collapse of bubbles are both possible but if the this line this entire this particular pressure line within the pump lies above the pressure where boiling happens at that uh, temperature of the liquid for example if the temperature of the liquid so this is my boiling pressure now if all those pressure lines in the i suction as well as discharge they are above that pressure line definitely boiling possibility is not there. Now, third point uh, if you see if we recall that once deformation happens let us say it was a flat surface and after deformation there is a small dip okay, and this dip can provide nucleating sites for bubble formation or bubble nucleation. So, here another bubble can form. So, this particular uh, dip is possible because there is a small deformation, but in the beginning if the surface is rough then definitely that formation nucleation of bubble will be much easier. So, smooth surface uh, that reduces cavitation, maintenance of smooth surface uh, adding inhibitors uh, chemicals like nitrates uh, chromates those actually uh, avoid cavitation so this kind of inhibitors which is chemical added to prevent corrosion. Cathodic protection is another way out in that regard sacrificial zinc or magnesium pieces can be used. Now, here if the cathodic reaction product is hydrogen that hydrogen gas on the surface this is the surface that hydrogen gas can create a cushion. for those bubbles which are forming uh, and if they burst. So, that bursting due to bursting there is a shock wave. So, that shock waves can be uh, absorbed to a great extent by the cushion of that hydrogen layer, hydrogen gas layer that is forming due to the cathodic reaction product which is basically cathodic reaction product. So, this is one way to prevent. So, these are couple of methods people can think of and there are modern routes for example, there are reports like uh, uh, 6 design design modification, design modification means uh, uh, if we try to operate uh, 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 for example, propeller if we consider a propeller that propeller when propeller moves uh, there is a trail of bubbles that forms in YouTube there are nice videos on this if one can go and look at it when pro propeller moves propeller rotates there is a trail of bubbles which are uh, moving along with the uh, along with the ship. Now, uh, if we reduce the speed of that propeller definitely bubble formation would be less 
because the pressure difference would be less, but if we reduce that uh, speed of the rotation then definitely uh, it will reduce that it is the thrust which actually taking the ship forward. But uh, in order to maintain that same thrust at the same time it can be reduced the speed can be reduced the rotation speed which actually avoids bubble formation or the pressure difference. Uh, that can be done if uh, uh, number of blades can be increased. So, there are reports that uh, by increasing the number of blades and there are other design modifications uh, which can actually reduce the speed of rotation which uh, in, a, in other way which reduces the pressure difference, but the thrust is maintained. So, uh, so that is one way of doing uh, is a basically a design modification of that particular uh, propeller. So, these are couple of uh, ways one can think of reducing uh, cavitation damage and if you want to see cavitation uh, why you can go to Google you just search cavitation damage you will find thousands of images and uh, some of the images you would notice that uh, uh, even the blades of the uh, impeller is completely washed off because uh, the dents those are formed because of this micro jet formation and the deformation as well as in parallel the corrosion is taking place. So, that will actually uh, take off uh, the take away or the chip off of that particular material and that if that material goes off definitely uh, the thrust is reducing. Uh, so, the pump will reduce its efficiency uh, amount of water that it has to discharge will definitely be less uh, at the expense of energy what we are consuming to do the running of that pump. Now, uh, so those are the kind of serious uh, defects that can be observed uh, in case of cavitation damage. Now, let us look at another form of erosion corrosion which is fretting corrosion. See if we recall we have discussed in the beginning of uh, erosion corrosion that fretting happens when two meeting surfaces are tight fitted. Okay, and there is a small very small even few microns level of amplitude of vibration. So, that particular lead to a kind of fretting action between those interfaces. Now, if we have corrosives then it can also lead to uh, corrosion of that particular thing. Now, in this in the case of fretting attack uh, it might happen in the dry condition also. So, dry condition definitely there will be a possibility of oxidation and uh, oxidation is nothing but uh, a corrosion because when we ch check about the oxidation, uh, uh, oxidation why we are saying oxidation is a corrosion that means uh, we have oxygen removing two electron going to O minus minus and metal sorry this is accepting two electron and metal leaving two electron then metal plus plus and these two react and form metal oxide. Now, this can happen on the metal surface if we see the oxide layer this is MO layer and this reaction happens at this surface and this reaction happens at this surface. So, they are depending on uh, the which one is diffusing in or out accordingly it will be decided where this reaction happens and where this reaction happens. Now, uh, in order to and that particular thing has been talked in previous if we go to corrosion 2 lecture series corrosion 2 you will see that on oxidation this kind of mechanism has been explained. But if we see that this particular if we ha if we see that uh, this particular uh, uh, if metal leaves two electron and metal plus plus ion is forming. So, that means this surface becomes anode because this one is anodic reaction. Now, this is cathodic reaction it is an electron accepting, accepting oxygen accepting, accepting uh, two electron and forming O double minus. So, this is cathodic. Okay. So, now this particular part is anode and since cathodic reaction happens on this plane which is cathode and this is metal part, this is oxygen gas part. Now, this metal can migrate and reach to this surface and then combine with O minus and form MO. So, that time 
this particular interface will grow. Other way around if this oxygen ion that can move, so this is metal ion moving, this is oxygen ion moving, so it can come to this surface and here metal ion and oxygen ion can combine and form metal oxide. So, that time this particular section will grow, okay. uh, this particular oxide will grow into the metal and in this case oxide will grow into the oxygen gas layer. So, now you see that there are uh, there are uh, four components here and for electrochemical reactions at the corrosion reactions we have must have four components one is cathode, anode, electrolyte and uh, conductor. Now if we see that this ions are moving through this metal oxide, so this is acting as electrolyte. Now, if this metal ion is forming, so this is, but this reaction is taking place at two electron, so that can go through that metal ion, metal oxide and can reach to this section and then it combines with this oxygen atom forms oxygen to minus. So, that means it is also acting like uh, acting as conductor. So, that means all four components are there, this is one, this is two, this is three, this is four. So, that means it is an electrochemical reaction and corrosion is nothing but an electrochemical reaction. So, this is also degradation of metal, but it happens without the presence of H2O, this is not taking place in aqueous medium. Now, uh, this fretting action can happen when uh, there are three criterias of course, one is the interfaces, this is criteria for fretting. Interfaces uh, uh, must be under load. So, that means if we take this two surfaces. So, this is two surfaces they are under load, so they are tightly fitted. Second is uh, there should be a vibration, there should be a vibration and that vibration could be very small few microns. Now, uh, third part is when this vibration and load both are taking place that both the actions that means load as and vibration should uh, uh, create a situation of deformation or where leads to lead to deformation or where okay so that must be this three condition must be met and then of course, uh, you have this all the condition all three conditions are necessary for fretting. Now, along with that if you add corrosion action then definitely we call it as a fretting corrosion. Now, uh, there are two uh, modes of fretting attack one is if we try to see the modes fretting corrosion. one is uh, uh, wear oxidation and second is oxidation wear. Now, if we try to look at two mechanism, this is wear oxidation. If we try to look at two meeting surfaces, that meeting surfaces we cannot make it, uh, uh, there will be definitely some uh, wavy nature on that on that meeting surfaces, aspirations would be there. Now, if the surface is like this, 
this is one surface, the other surface could be like this. So, these are the two surfaces and if you carefully notice that this is one point, this is another point, this is one point, this is one point where those metal surfaces are, are actually meeting at the point of reaches. Okay. Now, since it is under load, it is under load and there could be a small degree of uh, friction, that initial friction. So, that will lead to a, some sort of heat and that load as well as heat that can cold weld this section. So, this is sections are basically cold welded. due to heat plus load and this heat is coming due to fretting action. Okay. Now, once they are welded, this is cold weld because the temperature may not go uh, beyond that 0.5 T m, T m is the melting point. Okay. So, now that time uh, we have this welded portion, if the second stage, this is the first stage let us say, first stage and the second stage, if fretting action again occurs, that cold welded portion may get chipped off. Okay. So, that particular action leads to a small debris formation. So, if this portion, this portion actually breaks off. So, we have uh, this moves little forward and this moves little backward. So, this portion will break off and that break off will lead to a small, small particle formation. So, this is breaking off, breaking off uh, welded portion and that leads to small, small, small particle formation. Since this is exposed to uh, atmosphere, of course, there will be oxygen and the small particles when they are forming because of the fretting action, there will be a lot of heat. So, this heat plus oxygen, they will oxidize. The third stage, oxidation of small particle. Okay, because of heat and oxygen. And that is what at the feet, at the foot of it, so there will be small, small, tiny oxide particles. Okay, so, here we have debris, oxide debris and that debris is coming due to the breaking off of that welded portion and particle formation and oxidation of small particles. Now, this particular thing continues. So, that means, this will continue. So, again the next cycle, another ridge portion will uh, have will be will get cold welded and the second fretting action they will get chipped off small particle formation oxidation of the small particle forming oxide debris. So, like that way it keeps on uh, removing the material and this is typically uh, uh, first oxidation first cold welding is taking place and then wear action is coming into picture. So, this wear action is coming into picture and then oxidation. So, that is what it is called wear oxidation. Okay, because wear action is coming first and then oxidation of those worn out particles. This is about wear oxidation. So, there is one more which is oxidation wear, where oxidation happens first. Now, if it is same thing, the interface is rough, okay, those are micro uh, roughness, very small. Uh, protrusions are possible on the surface. Now, those protrusions are meeting. So, like that way, this is the another interface. Now, this is under load. Now, this happens, this oxidation wear happens in case of passivating metal. Now, if we try to see the, uh, if we make it little thicker, that interface.
So, this is a thick one. Now, we have uh, oxide layer. So, that oxide layer is forming just below that interfacing layer. So, this layer is forming because it is a highly passivating metal. So, this blue one is that oxide layer. Fine. Now, if the fretting action happens, this region, so where they are in contact, they will chip off, that oxide will chip off. So, now if I try to look at this part and zoom it, it is actually like this and initially it was like this. So, this is contact point. Now, this is the contact point and oxide layer is there. Next sec section, we have this flat portion is forming and oxide layer will stay here. Center part will not have any oxide layer because oxide layer got chipped up because of the fretting action. Now, since this material is uh, highly uh, passivating nature and there is oxygen, so it can react and that heat is there because it is a severe wear action. So, fretting action which leads to little lot of heat and that oxygen can react and form passive layer or the oxide layer on top of it. And the second time again, this if they are tightly fitted, let us say if this is tightly fitted now, tightly fitted now, now everywhere we have oxide layer after getting chipped off. The second time also this will again chip off like this. This is chip up like this, and then again, uh, this oxide layer would form uh, between two fretting action. Okay, so like that way, uh, oxide particle will also form in the root of it. In this portion, a uh, lot of oxide debris will accumulate, and this oxide debris is not the because of the oxidation of particles, metal particles. It's basically the removal of oxide layer during the fretting action and then again the oxide layer reforms. So, that way the oxidation happens first and then the wear of that oxide layer happens. So, that is where it is called oxidation wear. Now, it is very difficult to uh, isolate these two mechanism, uh, mostly both the mechanism happens together. So, together they happen okay, because it is lot of heat due to fretting and there is oxygen. So, that is what that both the mechanism could be possible and cold dwelling is also possible. So, that is what uh, these two mechanisms are is very difficult to uh, isolate from each other. So, we better it is basically a combination of both the processes lead to a fretting corrosion. Okay. Now, uh, if we try to find out uh, ways to protect uh, protective roots methods. Now, if you see that both the cases, both the mechanism where oxidation or oxidation where we have friction in friction coming into play. Now, that is what if we use lubricant, so then definitely the lubricant can reduce friction and that will definitely reduce fretting corrosion, fretting damage. Now, it also gives you another advantage. Uh, since uh, you could see that uh, after wear, in case of wear oxidation, oxidation of uh, tiny metal particles happen, and whereas happens, and whereas in oxidation wear, uh, first oxide layer gets chipped off, and then further oxidation of the metal surface, exposed metal surface happens. So, that way uh, the fretting action continues. So, in this case, also it reduces entry of entry of 
oxygen to the fretting surfaces. Okay. Now, th second is smooth surfaces. Smooth surface means definitely those ridges will not get number of ridges will be less and they will also get a much lesser load uh, to get welded or to get uh, that metal. If the oxide layer is covering that metal surface, the oxide surface would not get a chance to get chipped off because the smooth surface will have less number of aspirations. So, now this smooth surface also avoid also leads to a, a, a lower coefficient of friction. So, that is also possible. So, friction force will be less. So, the smooth surface can also prevent fretting. Uh, now, third is better material and here it is not about one material, both the materials have to be considered because for example, in case of uh, fist plates, we have rail material as well as the uh, fist plate itself. So, between that fist plate and the rail, we have fretting surface. Now, better material, we have to com have a combination of those uh, materials. For example, if we try to see, uh, uh, let us say, one can use hard stool steel versus uh, on hard tool steel. And now, you see this hard word is there. So, that means, the uh, harder the surface, higher will be the wear resistance that is a kind of uh, thumb rule, but it is not always true. But at this moment, if we only see that hard surface, the harder the surface, better will be the wear resistance, better will be the fretting resistance, but that is not all the time true, but this is in general I am saying. Now, uh, this is one better material means, let us say hardened carbon steel and hardened carbon steel. Now, when we talk about hardened carbon steel, hardening, hardening can, be ha can be possible if we do cold roll. Cold rolling, uh, cold rolled steel, or uh, cold roll, cold rolling is one of the process to increase the hardness of a carbon steel. So that is one. Sometimes uh, it can be uh, gaskets can be used, rubber gaskets. So what it helps, uh, what it does, it actually prevents oxygen to enter into the fretting surfaces. So that's what oxidation is avoided. So these are the couple of routes which way uh, one can think of uh, reducing. Uh, fretting uh, damage. So, let me stop here. So, we will continue uh, our discussion on stress corrosion cracking from the next class onwards. So, on the fretting, uh, on, the fr on, on the erosion corrosion, we have talked about general erosion corrosion, then we talked about cavitation and then finally, fretting corrosion. So, uh, erosion is uh, to some extent complete. Uh, let us move to uh, move on to another topic which is stress corrosion from the next class onwards till then thank you